Hello guys uh, from YouTube, all my followers. Um, this is uh, another one of my videos. Um, this time what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna try to um, identify a, a faulty sensor. Okay, I've done all the work already but I'm just gonna follow you uh, through on this video um, how you can uh, actually uh, check the sensor. But, but basically as you can see the, the car came to me like this. It's a non-starter. Um, as soon as you uh, uh, turn the ignition on it comes up with that uh, injection fault. Um, when, on, when the ECU is scanned it comes up with a high pressure uh, I can't remember now, uh, it's basically saying that the pressure in the rail, in the gallery, is too high. Um, on live data, what it shows me is that uh, the ECU is requesting uh, about 250 uh, bars and on, on Reno they don't show you how much is actually achieving, what it shows you is the difference loop so basically shows you the difference between the requested pressure and the actual pressure so basically with engine off they should both show 250 so 250 is the requested pressure and then the difference between the requested pressure and the actual pressure should show 250 because there's no pressure in the gallery so as you crank that pressure, that difference should start to reduce until it becomes nearly zero. Yeah. Now, obviously, when I crank the engine, this pressure doesn't really change. It stays on zero. Um, so, to me, is it's telling me that the high pressure sensor is not sending any information into the ECU. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go out there and I'm going to show you how you can actually test. Sorry, guys. Uh, the sensor in in these cars. Okay. The engine on this car is the F9Q, um, and uh, the ECU is a Bosch uh, EDC16 C3. Um, if you look on the internet, you're going to find some diagrams, some pinouts. Uh, but w what we're going to do is, I've, I've checked the continuity between the sensor and the ECU already. So all the wires, there's no uh, broken wires or anything like that. Everything is spot on. And uh, now I've turned to, to the sensor itself. So before I spend money on the sensor, I've decided to test the, 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 the actual sensor. Um, so what you do is ignition on. Ignition on. So you put the key on, you put the card on, and then you press the start for about five seconds and the ignition will become permanently on, will stay on, okay? So we'll go to the engine bay now and we're gonna test the sensor. So what we have here is the multimeter set up in two volts, okay? This is the sensor here. And we have, this is going to be, the green is going to be pin 1, the middle one is pin 2, and the last one is pin 3. Pin 1 is basically the ground, so you just need to check continuity between uh, pin 1 and the ground. And that should show you um, uh, 0 ohms, or very close to 0. Uh, then um, what we're going to do here is pin 3 is the voltage reference so the ECU should give us 5 volts so we're gonna put this pin here we're gonna see that it tells me that I have 5 volts I'm gonna slide it out and that will go to 0 now okay so we have 5 volts here now on pin 2 with ignition on I should have alpha volt so 0 0.5 so we're gonna slide this on and what, what I have actually is 0 0.05 I should have 0 0.5 so that is telling me the sensor is not giving any uh, reference back into the ECU that is like if it's nothing so because the ECU is not seeing any pressure from the rail um, is giving that fault. 
So this is how you can check for a faulty sensor. Um, hope this helps you. Uh, thank you for watching, guys.